hello friends in this video we are going to be looking at how we can clean up white backdrop in adobe photoshop this is twisted creative i like to my name if it's your first time on this channel please do me a favor do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button not just hitting that subscribe button also ring that notification bell so that i don't miss any of the next video and if there's anything you find out about this video make sure to hit that like button please it's going to help us in the youtube algorithm without wasting much time let's get into it so we are going to zoom in and see if there is any distraction you can right click here to select the patch tool so we can circle around these things and remove them so we just have to circle around it and push it to a better location So you can see these foldings can just remove them but what we are going to do is still going to remove these things but let's just manually remove some of these okay we are done removing the distraction the next thing we do is create extra three copies and we are going to be using our control j three times to create that extra three copies we are going to click on this first one we remain this first one as main image we are going to select this click on this plus mark to create an empty layer then we have an empty layer up there then we'll go to our background color and change it to whatever color we choose to use for this let's hit ok for this click on our paint bucket if you don't see your paint bucket here right click and you'll see paint bucket here so go to our paint bucket and click on the background so the empty layer will be filled with this color so let's go to our move tool and drag this empty layer down to this spot then we can disable this tool and make use of this tool the reason why we created this color is for us to be precise in our selection we have to select the first one that is enabled here then go to our selection tool and we can drag around the image for the selection Photoshop has made the selection. Now we have to make some corrections. We have to pick our lasso tool. If you want to minus, use this. If you want to add, use this. And continue. Fix this area. I'm going to separate the hair so that we clean the hair separately. Hold our shift to add. So we'll add this area that is not well selected. Then we can add this then after adding we can minus we can minus as you can see my minus there is on the minus side then let's go to the minus area and remove this then we can also minus this area then we can add this little cutout here that was not selected add here then we can remove with minus here can remove this you can be precise as you want but we are doing it fast because of tutorial sake don't want to take much time then we are going to add in this little area then add this area then if you check here we still have some left over there remove then remove this area then add here area then remove this area also then we can add up this area then we can remove here and add this little portion here we have to right click and select inverse then right click again and feather with two then we are going to be deleting three times one two three the reason why we deleted three times is to remove the fringes around the image so use your control d to deselect select the white background any area you notice that white background is visible just include it 
we have to right click and further with two also we we'll select our eraser tool you can right click on the eraser tool and select background eraser tool then you must be with soft round brush the middle eyedropper should be selected limit should be discontinuous tolerance 63 percent depending on how huge your image or how small your image will be so you can play around these settings to see what suits your image with this plus mark target the white background click and hold then drag it around the area you need to remove if you zoom in now and check you can see that the hair is properly cleaned from the white background we are going to use our ctrl d to deselect now we have a perfect selection of this image we can delete or disable this stuff let's delete it remove it then we are left with this for so this is the cut out image as you can see this image has not been moved from the position after duplicating this image if you try moving the image from the position it's not going to blend with other ones it's not going to rhyme with other ones so you don't have to move it from the position so we have to take it back to its original position okay we have this image cut out from the background as the main image then the next one is that we are going to use this one as background then we are going to enable this and disable the rest ones we are going to be using this as the background so we are going to remove the image on this layer too and use it for background then we are going to rename this to background so we are going to be removing this image from this background we have to select this image and hold our control and click inside the already cut out image box inside this box we are going to click inside to load the selection make sure the background is selected go to select then modify then down to expand we are going to be expanding it by 20 hit ok then if you take a look now we have extra space created the space we created is for us to use for content aware fields we are going to pick our lasso tool then right click and choose content aware field we are not going to tell photoshop that this is the area you want to take because the selection has already been there so as you can see we have the sample here what photoshop is going to give to you so we don't need to do anything than to click ok for this and you can notice that the image has been removed from the background very clean then we have to use our ctrl d to deselect then select if you take a look we have we have a, a fill here we have a fill photoshop use this to fill up the the space where the image is removed from we are going to select this then you hold our control to add this then use our control e to merge both of them together now we have just the background this other one is just the image as you can see so we have just the image and just the background so if two of these is enabled you notice the image is still intact we are going to select this background copy here then go to adjustment layer and choose hue and saturation adjustment layer click on this master here then the drop down will choose red then we can reduce the saturation of the red and maybe increase the lightness to about 18 or thereabouts. then we we'll click again and choose yellow then we'll reduce the saturation of yellow again and maybe the lightness up a little then with this now you can see that the background is clean but we still have these foldings and all that so we can remove this we can select the adjustment layer hold our control then click on the other one the background layer then use our control e to merge those two the next thing we do is that we are going to blur this background to remove some of these foldings so we have to take our rectangular marquee tool and drag around we are going to stop somewhere here then we right click and feather we are going to choose very high feathering like 100 then hit ok then we we'll go to then we'll go to filter blur then gaussian blur we are going to be looking at this area to see if this foldings is going to leave the background then we are going to pick it up to an extent to make it smooth to make it very smooth So I think it's smooth enough now. We can hit OK. Then use your Ctrl D to deselect. Use our marquee tool to drag around the downside. But this time around, it's not going to be as high as the top side. So we are going to right click and feather with 50 and hit OK. 
then we'll go to filter blur gaussian blur then we are going to reduce the blurriness here so i think 5.8 should be okay then hit okay then use our control d to deselect so if you take a look now we have the image floating because of the blurriness of the background we have to fix this by enabling this tool then we have to drag this and put place it in between the image and the background our rectangular marquee tool selected we have to drag around and see stop somewhere here then this time around we are going to right click feather with 100 then hit ok then we are going to be deleting the top side of this image we have to delete and you can see what happened there then let's use our ctrl d to deselect we are now left with the downside of this what we are after here is the shadows because without these shadows it's still going to be looking like something that is floating we have to change the blend mode to multiply so as you can see we have the shadow and the background is very very dark now we'll go to image adjustment brightness and contrast the more you add brightness and contrast the cleaner the background will be and you are going to be losing the shadows while doing this so you have to be careful as you increase the brightness and the contrast to suit your need so all what we are doing here is to retain the shadows we can hit ok here because it's ok so we can see add hue and saturation adjustment layer to remove this reddish and brownish uh, stuff here Let, ok let's rename this to shadow so we have to select the shadow layer then go to adjustment layer icon and choose hue and saturation adjustment layer we are clicking this master to get the drop down then the red we have to remove the saturation of red then maybe increase the lightness a bit then click on it again and choose yellow then reduce the saturation of yellow then increase the lightness a bit then as you can see we no longer have that red stuff or brownish stuff here let's check the before and after this is before and this is after this is before this is after the shadow background has been cleaned up also then we'll see have the shadows intact okay let's see before and after the shadow after adding the shadow and this is before adding the shadow this is after adding the shadow this is before adding the shadow taking a look at this shoe now you notice that there are six stains on the shoe we are going to select this image and go to the adjustment layer again and choose hue and saturation adjustment layer then we'll click here and do the same thing red saturation down then yellow saturation down and we can increase the lightness a bit as you can see the shoe is white clean now we can select this use our control i to invert then we have to pick our brush to make sure the foreground color is white and the background color is black link it so that it's going to be acting on this image alone so we can click this so as to act on the image alone then we'll select the layer marks and start painting you can increase the opacity and flow so as to come very fast so this is it so you can increase the brush size depend let's finish this area and we can increase the brush size okay you can roughly paint the rest area because it's not going to affect anywhere else apart from the apart from the shoe so this is we are going to do the same thing here So as you can see now the shoe is very very clean now let's assume that the image is a little bit dark and the background is a little bit dark we have to brighten it a little you can select the topmost layer and go to adjustment layer and choose maybe brightness and contrast then we can pick it up a bit it's going to be affecting the image and the background at the same time so you take a look at it you can notice that the image and the background is being brightened at the same time so we are going to be leaving it somewhere here and voila it's done this is the background and this is the image let's disable this image and see the back if not for the fact that this lady is putting on black you would have noticed some dark stuff around this image so if it's happened like that you have to select the shadow layer and pick your stamp tool and reduce your brush then you are going to be copying from the same layer 
you have to copy from with your alt hold your alt and select within select within select within and use it to cover up the edges like so so you are not going to be doing it when it's off you can on it and you can reduce your brush and so as you can see you can notice there is difference between when i've not done it and when i've done it so if you hold your alt and select the outside make sure the shadow layer is selected if you hold your alt click outside and click on the line you notice that the thick line is getting off so we are going to select again the outside and click on this you notice that the thick line is no longer there then we have to go to this other side and select from here and click on this area you can notice that the thick line is going off in case your image is not putting on black or it's just the skin there you will notice this thing it will be very very obvious then you can select outside and click then you can also do it to the shoes because the shoe is white that is why it's not showing had it been the shoe is another color it would have been that visible that you will see and you notice so click on the shoe you can click on the shoe around the shoe select the outside and click select the outside and click you can also do to this side of the shoe but you don't have to do to the bottom of the shoe because that is the shadow for you hold our alt and click on this to see the before and this is after this is before and this is after isn't that amazing if you find it interesting helpful and useful please don't forget to hit that like button because it's going to help us in the youtube algorithm and also if you find out anything about this video just drop a comment below like i always said if it's your first time on this channel please do me a favor do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button not just hitting that subscribe button also ring that notification bell so that i don't miss any of the next video Thanks for watching today's video. Creative people keep on creating. Please stay creative. Keep on creating. See you in the next one. Bye for now.